Hi, I'm Kyosuke Tanaka. I'm a PhD candidate in the Media Technology and the Society program at Northwestern University. Today, I'm very excited to present my work with the Leslie Dichers and Monsieur Contractor about origins of network acuity. In this work, we are interested in not only about who knows whom, but also who knows who knows whom. Basically, we are interested in cognitive social structures, so-called CSS. In CSS, what we know is that accurate network awareness is a source of advantage. For example, David Crocker's research shows that those who have accurate network awareness tend to have uh, informal power. More recently, uh, some studies show that high network awareness tends to be related to high circuit performance and a faster job promotion. That's being said that existing work established the relationship between network awareness and some of the outcomes. And also previous studies show that uh, some factors predict network awareness. There are two types of factors uh, based on my literature review. The first, of, first type of factor is what I call the dispositional factors, such as personality traits, self-monitoring, and cognitive ability. These abilities and personality traits uh, tend to predict high network awareness. And also the other type of factor is what I call positional factors, basically where you are in the network. And these are measured by uh, some type of degree centralities, like in degree centrality, out close in centrality, and between the centrality. However, existing research uh, makes some assumptions. One of the big assumptions is that a person who has accurate network awareness can navigate the social world with a more precision. Because of that, high network awareness is connected to certain outcomes but this assumption has never tested. Therefore, our research proposes a new concept called network acuity, which is defined as an ability to efficiently use their network awareness. Therefore, we pose two research questions in this study. The first research question is, how is network awareness related to network acuity? The second research question is what factors explain who is more likely to have high network awareness and acuity? In order to test these research questions, we conducted an experiment recruiting 405 participants organized into 23 groups. And in this research, again, we were interested in cognitive social structures. Therefore, we recruited student organizations where members know each other, meaning that they have some underlying social network structure. And based on that, uh, we recruited these groups and then uh, each participant received $30 debit card as a compensation upon completion. In our experiment, a group of participants came to the lab and then they first uh, took survey questions. After that, they did what we call network routing task. After that, they engaged in CSS surveys and they repeated these two tasks five times. Let me explain what I mean by network routing task. The goal of this task is to route as many messages to an assigned destination within three minutes. First participant went to this online platform called Six Degrees of Separation or Six DOS. Once everyone in the group registered and uh, created an, an account in this platform, they were asked to choose three contacts within their group. Once each participant chose three contacts, that gener generated a network. Based on that network, the system generated messages where the target person is three degrees of separation of it. And once uh, this task started, each participant received messages 
from either the system or other participant who chose them as a contact. And once they click on a message, they see uh, where uh, this message message's destination is. And then what they need to do is that uh, they need to choose one of their contacts who is more likely to get this message closer to the destination. And they uh, repeated this task until the time limit. And as soon as they finished uh, this uh, network routing task, they were asked to report on the people who you think each person chose as their contact in the uh, previous network routing task. And they repeated these two tasks five rounds. Now let's talk about the measurement for this research. First, I will explain network awareness. Network awareness was uh, calculated based on a z-score. And uh, we calculated the Jacker index uh, to see whether uh, each participant had an accurate perception of their uh, network routing task network. And if the a particular person's jacker index in a particular run is one, meaning that that person perfectly knew their underlying network structure of the task. While if it's zero, meaning that that person didn't know what the underlying network structure is. To adjust the group size, because some groups are slightly larger than other groups, we constructed the null model. Basically, we randomly shuffled the uh, participants' uh, perceived network responses, and that's generated the new uh, Jacker index. And based on that, we calculated the z-score for network awareness. The next measurement is network acuity. Network acuity is also calculated as a z-score for each individual in a given run. And in this case, we calculated the accuracy rate, which was calculated as the number of times each participant uses his or her contact who is on the shortest path towards the destination, divided by the total number of messages they routed in a given round. If the accuracy rate is one, meaning that that particular person routed a message every time uh, those who are on the shortest path towards the destination, while zero meaning that that person sent it to the wrong, that person sent it the messages to the wrong contacts all the time. To adjust the number of messages routed, because each uh, participant has a slightly number, uh, slightly different numbers of messages they routed, we again constructed a new model and basically randomly shuffling their responses. And based on that, we recalculated the simulated accuracy rate. And using that, we calculated the z-score for network acuity. Now let's look at the, some of the dispositional factors. The first dispositional factor is a personality traits. In this case, we uh, use a big five personality traits uh, using mini IP IP scale. Big five uh, personality traits include openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. The second dispositional factor is self-monitoring, which is uh, defined as how much people monitor their self-representations, expressive behavior, and also number of our affective displays. And we use the Snyder 25 item scale to measure it. Finally, uh, we also measure cognitive ability using Wanderlich test. It is a type of standardized uh, test, and basically each participant took this test and they got the same score for their cognitive ability. Finally, uh, I will explain positional factors. So again, I mentioned um, first uh, when they came to the, this experiment, they took some survey items. One of the survey items was a name generator in that group. Basically, they answered who on this list you know. Based on that, we, uh, 
we can see the underlying network structure of the group before doing the network routing task. Based on the network, we calculated the popularity based on in-degree centrality, reachability based on closeness centrality, and brokerage based on betweenness centrality. Now let's look at the th some results of this study. Just a reminder, so our first research question was, how is network awareness related to network acuity? In that plot, the x-axis is network awareness and the y-axis is network acuity. And each data point represents a participant. And in this case, high network awareness is moderately associated with network acuity. And this trend holds uh, across five rounds. And uh, interestingly, the relationship becomes stronger in later rounds. Now let's look at the second research question, which was what factors explain who is more likely to have high network awareness and acuity? To answer this research question, we use generalized linear model approach. The reason why we chose this approach is that our data is nested. So each participant was nested in a particular group and each participant engaged in the same task five times. Therefore, we argue that generalized linear models are the most appropriate model choice. Before explaining the results, I will highlight some of the features of the plot. Dots represent estimated coefficient and lines indicate 95% confidence intervals. In this case, if the lines don't cross zero, meaning that they indicate statistical significance and uh, solid lines indicate statistical significance at the p-value uh, lower than 0 0.05 and non-significant results are highlighted by the dotted lines. Also, I colored uh, different factors and this position of factors are in orange and position of factors are in green. Also, I mentioned that we, in this model, we control for gender run in degree centralization. Now let's look at the result for network awareness. For network awareness, conscientiousness is positive and significant, meaning high conscientious people tend to more accurately perceive their network. Also, popularity, as expected, is positive and significant, meaning those who occupy the central position in the network tend to perceive their network more accurately. Now let's move on to network acuity as a dependent variable. In this case, interestingly, conscientiousness is negative and significant, meaning high conscientious people tend to use their contacts less efficiently. And now self-monitoring is a positive and a significant for network acuity, meaning high self-aware people tend to use their contacts more efficiently. Let's uh, wrap up um, our presentation. So uh, in our results, we found self-monitoring is positively uh, associated with network acuity, also conscientiousness negatively predicts network acuity while it's positively predicts network awareness. And popularity positively predicts network awareness while it doesn't um, predict network acuity. And network awareness and network acuity are positively correlated with each other. What are our key takeaways from this study? As we expected, network awareness and acuity are positively correlated, but not strongly correlated. That means those who accurately perceive a network don't necessarily use the network efficiently. And particularly high conscientious people are good at accurately perceiving their network, but are not good at using it. With that, I thank my experimental team to conduct the experiment. And also I thank uh, founders to support our studies. With that, I will take uh, questions and comments. Thank you.